Did you know smoke from cooking over an open fire poses a higher health risk than malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS combined? Time spent finding firewood means less time for family, education, community, and income generation. Cutting trees for firewood creates massive environmental devastation. When the healthiest, most environmentally friendly cooking fuel is free, why are over three billion, yes, three billion people like Rosemary, still using wood for cooking and making water safe to drink? Why? Put yourself in Rosemary's place. You want a better way, but where do you start? It's all about access to knowledge, to networks, to funding. This is where Solar Cookers International shines. Over the past 30 years, our global web of partners have placed over 3 million solar cookers in homes around the world. However, successful transitioning from wood to solar requires more than just equipment. As a trusted leader in the global solar cooking movement, we believe knowledge and collaboration are the essence of global change. So we've built the world's largest solar cooking knowledge base. We also research, educate, advocate, and we convene change makers to share what works, to strengthen our partners who ring the world to connect with Rosemary wherever she may be. Such a simple solution. Where do you start? Start here. Partner with us. Make a life-saving impact on the world's health and environment. Join the global movement bringing solar cooking to every Rosemary. It's just the sun and that's it. I'm Sasha Nicole, and this is Caitlin Hughes, who serves as the Executive Director of Solar Cookers International. The mission of Solar Cookers International is to improve human and environmental health by supporting the expansion of, ex of effective carbon-free solar cooking in world regions of greatest need. Solar Cookers International leads through advocacy, research, and strengthening the capacity of the global, global solar cooking movement. I'm sure you will find the impacts of this work to be very inspiring. So thank you for being here today, Caitlin. Sure. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So um, to begin, can you tell us a bit about your background and what brought you into the sector of international development? Sure, absolutely. So I've been working with Solar Cookers International since about 2014. So thankful for the opportunity to be, you know, working with the organization in many capacities. And my background, I studied human development and minored in biology at the University of California, Davis. Um, and then spent some time, you know, service and, you know, working with people to try and make the world a better place has always been a part of my life. And I've tried to incorporate that in many different aspects, uh, working on a variety of causes. And I was fortunate to have the chance to volunteer with the local organization in Cameroon, Africa, after completing my undergrad studies. And that was incredibly eye-opening just to be able to see the challenges that a lot of people around the world face in terms of, you know, basic ac accomplishing basic things like the chance to go to school and accessing food and clean water and all those things that I think are really easy to take for granted for many of us that were born into different situations and so really became a commitment of mine to really work with people and in the world to see how we can try and level the playing field um because you know recognize that i had a, a lot of opportunities which i feel very thankful for and want to try and work with other people to make those opportunities available to even even more folks so um went on from there to get a master's degree in humanitarian action um to help continue to inform the work and have done work with a variety of of nonprofits. and i'm very happy to be working with solar cookers international because it just addresses so many factors that myself and so many people care about in terms of the environment and women's empowerment and addressing poverty and protecting the environment and clean water um, and safety, just so many things that are so important to so many of us. So I'm excited to speak with you more about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thrilled that you could make it. Thank you. Um, so why is solar cooking so important to the developing world? Why can't people just use fire, for example? <laughs> Thanks for asking. Um, well, just to give a broader picture of the challenge globally, because I think a lot of people don't realize that it's about 3 billion 
people cooking over open fires. Wow. So that's about 40% of the world's population. Yep. Uh, they can't just plug in a microwave or a toaster oven and have a meal just like that. So, you know, for a lot of the people who we're working with, you know, having something so simple, soundingly simple as a hot meal um, or clean water to drink could involve, you know, walking for miles and spending hours collecting firewood, which could be really dangerous. Um, you know, these are natural resources. And so there can be a lot of conflict over these disappearing natural resources because, you know, the more people cut down wood, then the further you have to walk and the more competition there is over for these natural resources. Um, but let's say you are able to successfully gather some firewood, even despite facing, you know, risks of gender-based violence or animal attacks, weather conditions, conflict, walking miles and miles, not to mention carrying these really heavy loads, which can also cause additional health problems, especially when it's predominantly women and children who are tasked with these responsibilities, um, especially risks for pregnant women too. Um, we've definitely heard of women having miscarriages from this and that's just, it's just heartbreaking. Um, so we want to prevent that um, because there's also then if you are able to successfully gather firewood or charcoal or animal dung as fuel, you bring it back and then you're breathing in the smoke from these cooking fires and the pollutants from breathing in cooking fire smoke um, can be equivalent to smoking 400 cigarettes and yeah, <laughs> in an hour, which is just you know, increasing the risk for cancer, premature death, cataracts, burns, and this is predominantly affecting women and children. So if you look at the cost, you know, on a personal level, a community level, a country level, as well as the global level, again, it's just heartbreaking. And not to mention, you know, the pollutants then, you know, go out and are affecting our climate. Um, and so one solar cooker can actually save one ton of wood for one family in a year. So, you know, thinking about that multiplied on the scale of 3 billion people, there's a lot of positive impacts for people. Um, and you can use solar cookers to pasteurize water too. So it's, oh. it's a really accessible, appropriate solution that can be made anywhere in the world with very simple materials, um, but can have positive impacts on so many levels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you touched on a lot of different angles there. Wow. I mean, they're, you know, the women's safety, the women's well-being. I think about just the time alone spent walking to gather wood, the time it takes to then, you know, get the fire started and, you know, everything else that you mentioned. Um, I'm going to be honest, I had not thought about many of those aspects until you just shared that. So thank you. Um, does your organization have a particular particular model of solar cookers that you've trademarked or um, that you use in every country that you partner with or how does that uh, how does that work exactly? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, so we are the leader of the solar cooking sector. So mm -hmm. there are actually hundreds of different types of solar cooker models with a whole bunch of varieties. Mm -hmm. And so we encourage individuals and communities to select a solar cooker that is a best fit for them. Mm -hmm. um, so we encourage local production because then there's that ownership and it's more sustainable and it's more scalable, mm -hmm. um, better for the environment, more economically feasible, all of those different aspects that we all appreciate in the, long, in the short and the long run. Um, but but for example, you'll want to look at things like capacity. So some solar cookers are designed, you know, maybe for a family or a household size of four, but other solar cookers are designed for maybe a household size of 10. So looking at that. Um, also looking at the types of foods. So, you know, for example, some solar cookers work really well for cooking things like soups or stews or curries um, that might have that lower temperature, kind of like a crock pot. Uh, other types of solar cookers work really well, like solar box cookers work kind of like an oven. So if you're looking at baking things or I've made, you know, lasagnas, quiche, enchiladas, all that kind of stuff. Um, but if you're in a culture like India or Nepal, where being able to fry foods like a stir fry or make chapatis is really important, then you're going to want to consider a solar cooker that gets to those hotter temperatures so that you can make the foods that you typically eat. Um, solar Cookers International also does performance evaluation process testing, PEP. Um, so that helps measure how powerful different solar cooker models are. So you as a consumer, or if you're working with an organization who's thinking about incorporating solar cooking, you can make an informed decision about what that's one factor to consider in terms of what solar cooker is going to work best to meet your needs. Um, and we do have those results available on our website, uh, open to anybody who's interested. So yeah. And then what is the approach that you use in investing in communities who want to change their cooking habits and build stability? 
Yeah, there's many different aspects that go into that. Um, so we work to create the network. Um, we've got hundreds of partners uh, in about 140 countries, and we work to facilitate that expertise sharing. Um, so we do that in a variety of ways. We manage the world's largest online database of solar cooking information. So we actually have two websites, um, but one of them is solarcooking.org. Uh, you can contribute information. You can pick a country and see hey, who's solar cooking in Zimbabwe? What's been done? And then that encourages people to connect with you know, people who are already doing the thing um, and can share their expertise. And again, it's about being able to cook the local foods, use the local materials, provide that training and follow-up, which is so important, um, share best practices, all those kinds of things. Excellent. And what are the three main pillars of Solar Cookers International? Yeah, thanks for asking. So we have wrestled with these these questions because this is such a a large scale challenge. This is a global challenge, like I said, affecting about three billion people. And so the way Solar Cookers International has thought about this is what are we best positioned to do to have the greatest impact, mm -hmm. the greatest positive impact for these 2.8 billion lives? Mm -hmm. And we've really come to answer that in three main ways: advocacy research and building capacity. So advocacy, uh, we have consultative status with the United Nations, with the Economic and Social, Social Council, which we've had uh, for many, many years. And so what that does is it enables us to go to United Nations events. So for example, the High Level Forum or the United Nations Climate Conference, and it allows us to interact with government leaders from countries. So, for example, the we met the environmental minister from Uganda, and we had a fabulous conversation. And he's like, "Yes, this is what my people need. Thank you so much for sharing this information with us. We were mm -hmm. able to give them information, connections to people in Uganda, information on best practices, all of that. And then we encourage countries to include solar cooking in their official plans to address climate change and to achieve the sustainable." development goals, because that's really going to open up more opportunities and more resources to empower countries to be, be able to enact solutions like solar cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of research, so that's what I meant, <clears throat> excuse me, mentioned before in terms of the performance evaluation process mm -hmm. testing. And so that's Solar Cookers International as an impartial body is able to gather the scientific data and share it with people in the world so that they can make unbiased decisions about solar cookers, which is really helpful and really raises the credibility of the sector to have that impartial information, kind of like consumer reports. Mm. Uh, and in terms of building capacity, that's so many different aspects that we do. So like I mentioned, the world's largest online database of solar cooking information. We've also organized conferences and we're able to bring you know, practitioners from all over the world and actually able to provide travel funding support, bringing the most important voices to the table. Um, you know, some of our attendees, this was their first time on an airplane or first time out of their country, but, you know, they've got years and years and years of experience in enacting solar cooking. And so being able to give them a chance to share that expertise while learning from other people, um, you know, who've also had years experience, years of experience in acting solar cooking, but maybe in, in different settings and being able to, to connect and share what works was, was a really empowering aspect of that. Um, we also try and share information about other opportunities, like we just did a webinar on carbon credit opportunities and challenges in the cooking sector. Um, but that's one of many, many things that we do. Yeah. And you touched probably a little bit on this already, but how, you know, since Solar Cookers International works in collaboration with various mm -hmm. um, partners, how does your team go about developing these new partnerships or maybe I should say um, connections? I'm not sure what the best way to frame that is, but you know, how do you, how do you reach the people? I guess in short is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Thanks for asking. Um, a lot of different ways, <laughs> As, you know, solar cooking. Uh, one of the most beautiful things about it is it's such a diverse community. I mean, you've got people from almost every country, you know, the, the sun touches us all. Um, and it, you know, we all need to eat. And so understanding the best ways to do that to protect ourselves and our planet and our families is, is really important. Um, so we go about building our relationships as with anybody in a very stepwise fashion. Um, so, you know, people can reach out to us or we can, you know, find them through the internet or through other personal connections or other organizations. Um, we definitely work to build connections with organizations, both working on the ground as well as other organizations in the renewable energy sphere to make sure solar cooking is included as a part of the conversation. Um, 
also working with organizations like the World Health Organization, making sure solar cooking is included as part of the, the conversation and the solutions when looking at household air pollution and women's health and, and things like that. Um, and then, yeah, meeting people through, yeah, connections, all kinds of different ways. So, and then, you know, working to share the information that SEI is engaged in, seeing how we can help them and seeing how they can do things also like contribute to, we're trying to track the number of solar cookers worldwide because okay. yeah, yeah. before before we started doing it, I don't think anybody was. So it's really hard to see like, how are things going? Are things getting better? Where are we at? And then it really helps in terms of our advocacy efforts when speaking with government leaders. You know, it's not just an idea. It's okay, here's a map and you can see a dot on the map of every solar cooker that we know of. So, yeah. What are some of the barriers? And I'm thinking of specifically people on the ground, um, you know, whether they're communities or individuals or women who are responsible for cooking. What are some of the barriers that they face? Um, you know, in towards improving their situations that, you know, that solar cookers kind of helps bridge that gap for. Right, yeah. Um, so to provide a bit of a more specific example, so we've been doing work in Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya. And so let's take a typical family there. Um, so the, the groups that manage the refugee camp, um, you know, there's no, big electrical grid that anybody can just, like I said, plug a microwave, yeah. plug a microwave into. So um, people have to find solutions in terms of how to cook their food and how to heat their water to make it safe to drink. Mm -hmm. And the organizations that run the refugee camps do provide some fuel wood, which is actually really expensive and inconvenient for them. But that actually does not even meet the cooking needs of these families. So then they're left to try and find other solutions in terms of how to be able to cook their food. And that can include trading or selling part of their food rations so that they actually have the ability to cook their remaining food, which with already a limited supply and, you know, oftentimes household sizes of nine or 10, mm -hmm. that's definitely not an ideal situation or trying to go out and gather wood, which there can be conflicts between the host population and the refugee population if they're competing over the same resources. So that can be challenging as well. Um, so solar cooking is really a great solution because once you have a solar cooker, there's no ongoing fuel costs. You don't need to go chop down wood. You don't need to try and buy fuel. Um, a lot of the other families that we work with, um, if, if their option left is to buy fuel, they can spend you know, 40% of their income, their household income on trying to buy fuel. Okay. And when you're looking at living off of like $2 a day, mm -hmm. if you can put that money towards being able to buy food or cover healthcare costs or school fees instead of this ongoing fuel cost, because the sun is free yeah. delivered to your doorstep every day, yeah. um, <laughs> then that really empowers families and communities to be able to invest in themselves and in other resources that will really improve their quality of life for themselves and next generations. Um, especially mm -hmm. if you're like, it's like school fees, being able for a family to invest in that will really just have positive impacts for successive generations. Yeah. Thanks for explaining the externalities of that too, because sometimes we, you know, we hone in on the one item and we don't think about that, the impacts that, you know, like you just said, they can send their children to school. They save a lot of time. They can maybe not as much in a refugee camp. It depends on the situation, but spend time generating income in other ways. So, you know, it really does revolutionize their capacity to do more with what time they have. So, um, in your experience, what prevents people from having more access to solar cooking? Yeah, um, that's a, a great question. We are definitely working in terms of, like I said, trying to raise awareness on all levels. So like the individual, the organizational, the community, the country, and the global level. Um, you know, I think with an increasing awareness in terms of how urgent climate issues are, I think, you know, that recognition of the importance of these, these issues is creating more drive towards implementing solutions like solar cooking around the world, which I think is really beneficial. Um, I think there's also an increasing awareness in terms of 
women's health and how household air pollution is related to that um, because it, it's often been known as the silent killer. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, I think women's and children's lives sometimes aren't valued as much. And so, you know, if you look, though, that there's increasing awareness of this and, you know, more work being done to, to tie these things together and how, how taking care of people and investing in them can really have benefits on so many levels, I think, you know, providing, solution, providing information about solutions like solar cooking can really address so many challenges that, that our world is working to address. Um, also, with the recent pandemic, you know, if you look at a solution like solar cooking, um, you're decreasing res respiratory strain. So if you're not breathing in smoke equivalent to, you know, 400 cigarettes an hour, yeah. <laughs> um, you're not going to be as at risk for a respiratory right. disease. If you don't have to go to a market to buy fuel or to get, if you don't have to go out and gather fuel, you're not going to be encountering those risks from, you know, having to interact with people or, you know, those additional health risks as often because sunlight is delivered to your doorstep every day. If you can pasteurize your water using a solar cooker, then you're not facing comorbidity from, you know, uh, waterborne diseases as well as airborne and respiratory diseases. Um, and it just, it also really creates a lot of self-sufficiency in terms of an individual, an individual household level, but also a country level, because we've seen supply chains incredibly impacted with the pandemic. And so if you're talking about families who, for example, might be importing, might be importing LPG, liquid petroleum gas, you know, going to a market or even a country might have a short supply in terms of that or transportation might be impacted by the pandemic. But when people have solar cookers before things like a global health crisis or a natural disaster, like an earthquake strikes, hey, you can start using that. <laughs> and then you're, you're, you're more resilient and you're more prepared to be able to deal with that. Sure, absolutely. And then how many, whether it's um, organizations or communities, um, has Solar Cookers International collaborated, collaborated with thus far and in how many different countries? Yeah, we've collaborated with hundreds of organizations in about 140 countries. So okay. you can go go to our world's largest online database and just see yeah. the information on all the different individuals and organizations who are doing anything with solar cooking. And we, we work together and share that information to make it easier for the global community to connect. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll make sure that that information is in the description below. So it's very accessible for anyone else. But um, you know, if anyone listening wanted to support your work, um, what would be a good way for them to do that? And how are some ways that they can support your work? Yeah. Um, so like I said, we have two websites. Um, solarcooking.org is kind of our database. And then solarcookers, ers.org. Um, that's really Solar Cookers International's website. So you can come. You can learn more about what we're doing. You can see if we have any events. Of course, support is, you know, individual mm -hmm. donations really make this work possible. And we are just so thankful for everybody who's able to support that and who recognizes their ability to make an impact on this global global challenge. Because it is just so empowering to see, you know, a woman being able to, to have a smile on her face because yeah. she's able to cook and take care of herself and her family in a way that's, that's not harmful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And beyond cooking and helping the environment, what are some other benefits that communities experience when they use a solar cooker versus a more traditional way? Yeah, there are so many great applications of solar cooking. Um, solar drying is one of my favorites, and that's actually a really important way to create food stability. So let's say you grow peaches and everybody grows peaches and all the peaches become ripe at the same time and hit the market and then the price of peaches drops. That's really hard. Yeah. If you can dry your peaches, then you can actually sell them over time and you're adding value. So um, that's a really cool way to, to, again, take a very appropriate technology accessible to people and apply it to the situation to, to continue to open up options. Yep, absolutely. Um, would you be willing to share about the cake business that you told me about when we talked sure. earlier? I thought that, I personally thought that was a really cool story, if you don't mind my bringing it up but sure of course um so one of the advantages with solar cooking is the time that otherwise might be spent gathering fuel so let's say you know a woman or children might be going out to gather fuel but with a solar cooker um you can actually use that to cook your food but you can also do that to generate income so 
uh, for example, if you're cooking over a traditional three stone fire, it's baking something like a cake is not very easy to do. <laughs> it's not going to be the right temperature and then you have to keep breathing in the smoke. But we've actually seen people who have started businesses in terms of restaurants or baking cakes, and then they're able to actually sell that and generate income for themselves and their families, which can go towards additional needs that they might have. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's neat. I appreciate that, you know, mm -hmm. additional value add that that brings. Mm -hmm. um, so how is impact measured? That's a really great question. So as the leader of the solar cooking sector, there's a few things that we do to, you know, try and help support that within the solar cooking community at large. Um, so we actually worked with a group of solar cooks. Uh, we had a working group in terms of designing and creating an adoption and impact survey because you're not the first person who's asked that question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it goes back to that. How are we tracking progress? And can we gather data in a way that's consistent across our many collaborators? So it's not just you know, you're asking these questions and then you're asking these questions in a different way. And then it's hard to, you know, compare and contrast the data. So we have a, an adoption impact survey, which is available on our website. We encourage everybody to use it, but it helps um, anybody who's implementing solar cooking to, you know, see what things like fuel usage and costs for fuel and health impacts are before a family has solar cooking and then after um, to really see that difference. Yeah. And then how do you know that your efforts are sustainable? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's a lot that we do from the beginning in terms of the initial conversations when looking at solar cooking. So we found really a lot of best practices just through our more than 30 years of experience that really having local ownership is really important. So another thing that we encourage in terms of best practices is we have a quick needs assessment also available on our website, solarcookers.org. And that way, anybody who's looking at implementing solar cooking can actually speak with the community or speak with individuals to see if it's something that folks are interested in and if it's a good fit. Like if you have a home that's completely shaded, maybe it's not the best place, but that's important to ask beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know, are you willing to try something new in terms of your cooking habits when it can generate these benefits? Yeah. Um, so we, we encourage people to use that. And then also to have, you know, especially women leaders within a community who speak the language, who cook the local foods, who can really continue to set that example. And then, you know, provide continued training and follow-up and guidance as well. Because as with any any behavior change, you know, if I'm trying to exercise more, <laughs> having people who help me do that and, you know, accountability, accountability buddies and um, people who share what works for them and can encourage me and I can encourage them and really creating that social community to support, um, you know, these habits can really help and make a difference too in making it sustainable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what have you learned either individually or as an organization from your experience in this role or in general from working in developing countries? Yeah, I, I just love the ability to connect. Mm -hmm. Like solar cooking is just such a diverse group. And I've had the honor to work with just such powerful and inspiring people from all over the world who, you know, bring their expertise and are just so dedicated to the idea of of giving a healthier solution for, for people on the planet um, and, you know, working hard in whatever ways we can collaboratively to make that happen. It's just been, it's just been really inspiring. Yeah. And, and how is the model at Solar Cookers International different from say a traditional humanitarian aid organization? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think, you know, Solar Cookers International, as well as the humanitarian sector in general, I've seen has been doing a lot of evolution. Um, I think our organization, as well as many others I've been seeing, have been asking ourselves that hard question of, you know, we have we have done and still continue to do on some level some of that direct service, which I think can be absolutely great for that group or that community, mm -hmm. you know, but then we're left asking ourselves these questions of like, oh, that was great for, you know, those hundreds or thousands or even tens of thousands of people. But what about the other 2.8 billion people cooking over open fire? And that's a question that just, 
you know, I think plagues a lot of us when working on such a global scale is, okay, you know, we can have this short-term immediate impact, which feels really good, but what are the best ways that we can really work to address that systematic change on this global scale? And that's why Solar Cookers International has come up with a lot of these, um, these approaches in terms of working with government leaders. Um, we also created impact sheets. So we actually calculated the costs to each country that comes from people being sick and then the environmental costs from having that much carbon dioxide released from cooking fires. <clears throat> and then the last, you know, value in terms of human lives, but also as it's able to contribute to the economy. Mm -hmm. And we really hope that that's going to inspire, you know, countries and organizations like the United Nations to be able to invest in solutions like this, because then the benefits are multifold. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one aspect that really fits in terms of our advocacy work, but then also in terms of that building capacity aspect, creating those, those opportunities for our collaborators to connect and share their expertise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Solar Cookers International has a lot of experience with 30 years, yeah. but we don't have all the answers. You know, we don't, a woman sharing about her experience working with a women's group in Tanzania, talking to um, another woman leader in India, like creating a platform and an opportunity for them to share their expertise with each other is just absolutely beautiful to watch it unfold. You know, because they're going to share what's working for them, they're going to hear what's working from somebody else and creating that opportunity um, to help everybody do what they do better, I think is just what's really going to help each of us work together to scale up to meet this need and demand of, of about 3 billion people. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Could you tell us about a person or a group that has touched you personally in your work? <laughs> sure. I mean, and there's so many. It's Probably many, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will just, I'll, I'll give a highlight to, we we're fortunate to have a team of global advisors. So we have about a dozen experts in terms of different aspects of solar cooking, be it, um, you know, a sustainable business model or institutional scale solar cooking, which can be, you know, for example, like on a rooftop generating steam, which can then cook for thousands of people at a time, which is really, really cool when looking at yeah you know, countries like India, um, where we hosted our international, our most recent international conference before the pandemic and, you know, looking at those solutions and how they're applied again to, to meet the needs of a community is just really cool. Um, but I'll give a shout out to one of our global advisors, Dr. Mrs. Donick Paltz McGilligan. And I, I kind of think of her like the grandmother of solar cooking and she just, yeah, she, she brings everybody in and, you know, she's worked with a lot of, of women in India and, you know, really taking solar cooking as a solution. I mean, and then you were asking about applications before. I mean, using everything from like using it to create dyes for coloring clothing um, or ironing. You can actually heat an iron on a solar cooker and then use that versus, yeah. <laughs> yeah, versus having to heat it up in a fire and then all the negative consequences that come along with that. So, um yeah, she, she has a lot of experience. She does the work, but then she's just, I think, the most inclusive people in terms of bringing people into the movement. So it's, um, but there's so many people I'm fortunate to have the chance to interact. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you probably learn something new quite often because this is a pretty vast, you know, it sounds simple, solar cookers, right? You have kind of, when I first heard it, I had an image of you know, one of those little with aluminum foil that I made in middle school. <laughs> I think that was yep. my first image, but uh, definitely is much more vast than that. <laughs> yep. So yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Um, well, just, you know, one more time, uh, you know, this is clearly very important work um, for anyone who is listening, who would either like to get involved or support your work, what would be a good way for them to do that? Yeah, definitely a great place to start is solarcookers.org. Um, yeah, we've got lots of ways to get involved that way. So please, yeah. please visit us. Um, there's actually a place to sign up and get, get our news. And then that way you can be up to date about anything that's happening um, and sign up for any opportunities that come along the way. So um, that's a great, great way to start for sure. Yep. 
Excellent. Okay. Well, we will make sure that that is all listed in the description below. And um, thank you so much for being here today, Caitlin. I just, I found this to be fascinating and very eye-opening and uh, I'm sure our listeners will as well. So we really appreciate your time and um, sharing about your expertise and the, and the good work that you're doing. So keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Really appreciate you bringing voices in from all around the world on finding the common themes and also the chance to share about what, what we're each doing. So thank you so much for this. Yeah, I think, if you know, kind of like you said a few minutes ago, the more we share, the more we collaborate, the more we learn. And ultimately, in the end, you know, the greater good is achieved or, you know, in, in process to be achieved. We're never going to solve all the world's problems, but, but we can keep working towards towards solutions. So. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. Here at Emanate International, it is our mission to promote nonprofits and social enterprises that equip the recipients to become independent, autonomous, thriving members of society. Indeed, Solar Cookers International is certainly doing great work to improve human and environmental health by ensuring a more eco-friendly and sustainable way for people to cook their meals. If you enjoyed our discussion today, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you will be in the know for future inspirational conversations with other leaders who are making great gains and improving our world. Thank you.